Hello, survivors. Happy New Year. I hope everyone's having a great New Year out there. Um, I just have a good feeling about this year. I just, I love it when things start anew and we get to just, um, you know, just reset things and, and rethink about where we want to um, take our lives, think about where we want to put our attention to, think about what used to work for us and what, um, what we want to bring more of into our lives. So this video is going to be about um, the, the Greek story of the Minotaur and the Labyrinth. I tend to go back to Greek themes and, um, and just mythologies, ways of thinking, because that's what I studied in school, and I think they're very relevant. Um, and I think this one in particular of the Minotaur and the Labyrinth is really useful for looking at from an, an above kind of perspective from how we interact with the narcissist. So I'm likening the interaction with the narcissist like being in a maze because it often can feel like we're in a maze. We've hit a dead end. We don't know the way out. We don't know which way to go. And in the Greek story, um, the Minotaur, his name's Asterion, um, he was born half, half human, half bull. And I see it as kind of like a being that's a person, ultimately, but they're kind of like a bully or bullish type of person. So it's like half, they appear to be human, but they've got this bull instinct side to them. And, and the Minotaur, Asterion, sorry, my dog's digging around there, please. <laughs> <laughs> Just disregard the uh, animal antics in the background. Foxy. Foxy is um, poking around back there. But it was half, half animal, half bull, and half human. So it was, kinda, it was a human creature, essentially half human, but a bullish, bullying, I'll even say, kind of creature. He used to live on eating people. So he's kind of a scary figure and he lived in the labyrinth. So it, you can look at it as a, a metaphor for either the narcissist themselves or um, your involvement with the narcissist. The minotaur is like the scary creature that has power over you and you're stuck in their maze. And I'm just kind of seeing the maze as the narcissistic space. It's like their domain, their the place where they know where all the, the doors and the um, passageways are. And they kind of want to keep you trapped there. They want to keep you as prey within it, or they want to be taking supply from you. In the story, the Minotaur actually eats humans. So in that way, they're prey or supply for the Minotaur. But in the narcissistic interaction, you're really your reactivity and your attention and your um, either your fawning towards them or your um, any sort any sort of reactivity to them them being the focus point is really uh, their goal and then you being one of the characters in the maze in the story I think that Minos the king who owned the uh, labyrinth would have 12 people, 12 young people from Athens come and sacrifice themselves to the labyrinth and, and often the Minotaur um, got to them. But in one particular case, Theseus, um, who was the son of one of the kings of Athens, he, he got a way out. And I'm going to use this analogy as a way for you to get out of the labyrinth of the narcissist too, because it's a crazy making maze and it can make you feel powerless. It can make you feel stuck. It can make you feel like you don't know which way is up or down, which way is out. That's often um, a result of interacting with the narcissist. And in the story, Theseus gets, um, a ball of string from Ariadne, who is actually Minos's daughter, the king's daughter. And she also gives him a sword. And I'm likening the sword to, I think it's within um, normal um, archetypes that the sword represents the truth and knowledge and wisdom. Like I'm thinking of Justice, for example, who holds a sword and is blindfolded and has uh, a, a scales in her hand or, or balance, you know, a, 
balancing skills. You see that in courtrooms um, when things have to do with the truth. So I'm, I'm seeing the sword as um, the truth you know, being able to defeat the Minotaur with the truth, with knowledge, arming yourself with the truth. And the ball of string, um, it's sort of like when you go into a maze, if you let out a little bit of string each way, it can be a pathway out. So what I'm going to say is, is there a point at which you can go back? You know, if you find yourself at a dead end, or if you find yourself stuck, if you find yourself um, at the mercy of the Minotaur in, the, in that labyrinth, you know, which is confusing, it's full of twists and turns, it doesn't seem to make sense. There's, there's the only way out is to follow, you know, really the trial and error and remembering where the dead ends were. So with the, the image of that ball of string, is there a way that you can go back and see at which point was it that you gave yourself over to the narcissist or that you gave them your heart or gave them your um, need for recognition, for validity, was there, if you can look back to see when you first started getting involved with the narcissist, was there a point at which you gave them your power to decide whether you're okay or not, or whether or not you belong or not, or whether or not, um, is there a point in, the, in which you can go back and see that there might be a point where you want to make a different decision? like? A lot of us go in with the narcissist wanting approval or wanting to be part of their golden club or, um, you know, their, their special, special kids club or um, the cool people's club. They're, they have this, this whole narcissistic space that is, you know, in some ways golden. And it's kind of like the spider's web again. If you can find a way to detach yourself and get out of that, that's the best way out. You're not going to change the narcissist. You, you can figuratively slay the Minotaur with truth and with knowledge. That's what I'm seeing as the sword. And if you can go back with this ball of string and work your way out and see, okay, when did I first turn myself over to the narcissist? When did I first give up on myself and want recognition from them? When did I decide that I was going to hand them the power to decide, you know, whether I'm worthwhile, whether I um, get attention or not, whether I, um, you know, get approval or not. That's a big one for codependents or the, the targets or victims of narcissists is that the, the narcissist knows that their approval means a lot to them to their targets or victims. So I'm going to encourage you to look back in your um, personal history with the narcissist and see where can you wind that string back and see, okay, here's a turn at which I decided to give the narcissist the power. I decided to believe in them as this strong, um, powerful being. And at which point do I want to make, go back and wind that back and then make a different decision? Like say, you know, you're not the source of my personal validation. You're not the source of my worth. You're not the source of where I get approval or validation from. So I'm just using that um, story as a metaphor for our relationship with the narcissist. How can you strip the Minotaur of his power using the sword of the truth, you know, that image, and winding back your story, winding back your ball of yarn, back to a point where, say in the maze you went one way, you know, winding it back and saying, okay, that leads to a dead end. That leaves me feeling powerless, victimized. And wind it back to somewhere where I wanna make a different decision. Oh, I'm gonna, instead of handing my power away to them and giving it to them and expecting it back, I'm gonna hold it for myself. I'm gonna go down this corridor where I give myself validation and I give myself, I'm armed with the truth and I'm gonna, you know, go a different way and make a different choice. So that's a little bit more empowering. So that's a, um, that is a story. You may wanna look it up online, the Minotaur and the Labyrinth and see, see how you can survive, defeat the Minotaur, and claim your own life and your own freedom and exit that labyrinth, that crazy making narcissistic space um, for yourself. It's a, it's a good thing, it's a good image to think of, like slaying, slaying the attachment 
to staying in the labyrinth or to being at the power and the mercy of the Minotaur. So thanks everyone for watching. Hope everyone's having a great new year and I will see you again soon.